We also need to deal with the Pennsylvania Dutch, which are a whole different group. The Pennsylvania Dutch are a group of German immigrants that are coming into the area surrounding Pennsylvania. It will go beyond Pennsylvania into West Virginia, Maryland, and other areas. But today we would think of this as Amish country, as Pennsylvania Dutch, down here in southeastern Pennsylvania, surrounding Harrisburg and the like. Now, when we think of this area, we tend to think of the Amish and the Mennonite, but these are uh, only two of many religious groups that will be practicing in this area and that we're generally referring to when we talk about the Pennsylvania Dutch. And by the way, that also brings up an important point. Deutsch does not mean Dutch. What we have is a group of German immigrants coming over. They would have referred to themselves as Deutsch. And this is going to be mistranslated and misunderstood as Dutch, hence the term Pennsylvania Dutch, which should be Pennsylvania Deutsch. But I just want to make sure that I'm clarifying that so you don't mix them up with New Amsterdam and uh, the New Netherlands and all of those sorts of ideas. Now, these immigrants coming over are actually highly skilled immigrants, which is a little bit unusual. It's not the usual pattern that we see. They're usually trying to escape religious persecution. Of course, religion is a huge issue in Europe, especially in the 17th, uh, 16th and 17th century following the Reformation of Martin Luther. So these groups will come over and they tend to be rural farmers, which means they come with a very broad base of skills, things like barn building, things like general construction, uh, furniture making, etc. And of course, they bring with them Bells Nickel, which the only reason I'm bringing this up is a little bit of comedy before getting into Pennsylvania Dutch design and motifs. So let's talk about birds. Birds are a very common motif and they tend to refer to the spiritual. They tend to refer to a sense of freedom, spiritual freedom or freedom of the afterlife, something that we've seen. But in the Pennsylvania Dutch tradition, we're going to see these very simplified, fairly geometric forms. They're very linear. In other words, they are line based and they tend to lack mass or volume, which is a fancy way of saying they're two-dimensional. And we see the same thing with the use of the pomegranate. Now, the pomegranate has a specific meaning. It always means fertility, because if you open up a pomegranate, there's lots of seeds, just like you should have lots of children. Um, not, I'm not saying, but you get the idea, the religion at the time. So it gets across a sense of fertility, and they use that symbolism quite commonly. We will also see the use of flowers. Now, when we see flowers in threes, it actually refers to the Trinity or anything in threes refers to the Trinity, which is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So there's always some definition, some purpose to these forms. They will also put stars on their barns or in their homes. These are good luck or good fortune. All of these are examples of what are called hex signs. Now, this is a specific form of Pennsylvania Dutch folk art. And there's two schools of thought regarding its meaning. One means that it's basically a talisman, like something bringing good luck or bringing romance and marriage, etc. The other sees it as purely decorative. And it kind of depends what tradition you're in. The problem with the Pennsylvania Dutch is we're dealing with numerous traditions, all these different religious groups and other forms. So it muddies the water. Today, in modern form, you would see these painted on barns and put up on the end of the barn, usually more as a talisman than anything else. And it helps that the state of Pennsylvania has actually paid them and encouraged them to do this, to draw more tourists into the area. Not that tourism gets into interior design, but in this case, it definitely did.